Welcome back, everyone. Live Cube coverage here at VMware Explore. It's the second year of Explore. Our 13th year doing the Cube at VMware's conference, formerly VMworld. I'm John Furrier, your host. Dave Vellante is in the set. I'm here with Rob Stretchy, leading our research for the Cube. And we've got two great guests, Phil Brotherton, Cube alumni. He's the VP of Solutions at NetApp. A Cube alumni have been at NetApp for many, many years. It's Mir Kadu, v worldwide VMware Strategic Alliance Solutions architect leader with AWS. Thanks for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate you guys. Um, Got to love the cloud action. Phil, great to yeah. see you. What's new? You know, <laughs> what is new? You know, I was thinking it's. I've been coming to this event since it was in Los Angeles, probably with you, <laughs> in about 2005. And I was thinking, like, it, coming over here, that we've gone from telling people what a VM is and why you would want one to could you actually use that for a database and basic stuff like that. And now we're sitting here working with AWS on how to extend to the cloud. We've got these cost reductions, like there's, we've got customers here, because we were here last year just extending the solutions right. with AWS. At this year we've got customers, improvements to the products, and but, we've got AI to come in the future. Yeah, it's, but, like, it's a very interesting time. Samir, <laughs> I want to point out, I've interviewed, I've known NetApp for a long time, since 1997 as a company, you've been there forever, OG at NetApp. I remember, Not that long, I remember when I first started covering <laughs> AWS, um, around 2012, 2013 timeframe, at that time, NetApp was already in the cloud. I mean, NetApp doesn't get the credit they were doing stuff with, against, against the grain, by the way, in the storage industry. Not to brag, but that was one of my teams, Dave. We were porting ONTAP onto so, AWS in the marketplace. Yeah. Fast forward. <laughs> Cloud AI. volumes on tap. I, 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 see. <laughs> see, so, yes, yeah. exactly. So, as Andy Jassy would say, there's no experience is yeah. the best right. compression algorithm for experience. Just can't, just, can't just get there. Yeah. Where are you guys now? Because right now the cost Refactoring, did a lot of uh, Amazon savings in the cloud. I just did a segment on that. People are, are right sizing in the cloud, yep. not repatriating. All the repatriates out there, trust me, there's net new on premise, don't get me wrong. But that refactoring and that re right sizing is being reinvested. Yes. Okay, this is the conversation that we're hearing in the marketplace. I'm going to right size the, the cloud play, I want to reinvest yep. in more horizontal scalable IT workloads on prem and cloud. Yeah, I think what it comes down to is you have customers who are utilizing NetApp technologies in their on-premises environment, right? Now they're also utilizing it in AWS, right? With NetApp on tap, FSXN, it comes into play where you can leverage AWS services. Now customers want to take it, hey, there's VMware Cloud on AWS. How can I leverage my investment knowledge of NetApp technologies with VMware Cloud on AWS? So last year the announcement was made for our yep. NetApp on tap, FSXN, right? And then it comes down to where the advancements have been made. And you mentioned the customers already that are utilizing it, right? They're in different verticals and whatnot. So it shows where now you can decouple your storage from your compute and your memory, right? So now, rather than growing out your SCDC by adding additional hosts, you no longer have to do that, right? So from a TCO construct, that comes into play. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that hasn't changed with cloud and on-prem is that you know, infrastructure is a lot about price, performance, and ease of use, like when you get down to it, yeah. right? And the when we first started working with Amazon, it was clear that there's just the ability to call EC2 just quickly. Yeah. And so my team's developed as a SaaS, essentially. ONTAP is a software layer that Correct. runs on EC2 and EBS and S3, right? And so when we first built that out, we were trying to provide file services yeah. easily on the Amazon cloud, Correct. enterprise file services. Yeah. The, actually, the next step was obvious to us. It was, now you got to get VMware yeah. on, to, right. on tap. It, it's, it's actually the same thing that happened to NetApp's yeah. business on-prem over yeah. the last 20 years. Absolutely. We're playing that out again with the apps moving to the, to the Amazon cloud right now. One thing I always want to tell people is, the economics are changing so fast yes. on the cloud side that a lot of people say, hey, I looked at it a few years ago and it was expensive. And I'm like, yeah, well look again. Yeah. Because like Samir was saying, for example, when we put ONTAP and, and VMware together, and now in your bigger data sets, you can break the connection between compute adding and storage adding, the economic value of that is like a 40% cost reduction yeah. to operations. Because you're optimizing EC2 versus the storage piece you, and things they work Separately, together. All, yeah. all big operations, every, anyone who does service provider work knows any right. a big operation is going to want to run a compute layer, a network yeah. layer, and a storage layer yeah. separately. Yeah. So you can scale independently. That and, and 
keep it connected easily. Absolutely. That's the holy grail. Absolutely. And I mean, Amazon is the king of that. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny enough, I, I used to work at Amazon and I used to work at NetApp. Oh, well, wow. And I was okay. there when uh, FSX, yeah. NetApp, ONTAP, as we had yeah. to call it because, you know, very yeah. long yeah. Uh, old acronyms side from that. Yeah. But I, I think what was interesting when I was there and what, and to your point, I think, is how fast the uptake and the, yeah. the actual using the services that are built into ONTAP that had the auto tiering that were able to right. do right. that and bring right. people through to help them yeah. see that cost savings. Are you, now that you're able to be part of VMC as well, right? Yep. That was one of the recent, more recent announcements, yeah. is that, are you seeing that as well as a big piece of it where people are oh, saying, absolutely. hey, I'm gonna yeah. replicate so, my data store up there yeah. and bring it up in VMC? Like, if you just think, a really simple example is, uh, in a jargon, data center evacuation. You're, 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 you're done with a lease on a data center. What would you like to do? Have another lease or would you like to move to Amazon? Yes. Yeah. And, and it's like, well, you, you're still going to operate typically in a hybrid mode when you're thinking like Correct. this. And so bringing basically all the integrations we've done with, with yeah. VMware up into the management plane so you can drive the enterprise data management out of the management plane of VMware having that run on the Amazon cloud, which then makes it extensible yeah. to all the Amazon services, yeah. it's, it's a really powerful capability. Now you have to build it up. All our customers yeah. that are good at it, they understand virtual, uh, like the, the, the um, I'm gonna say, it, you could say it for me better. Well, I mean, what it comes down to. Getting the networking correct is always an important thing. Absolutely. Detail. The it, VPC, it, that's yeah, what I was trying it, to say. You over, <laughs> the thing is, you know, people look at it, hey, it might be complicated, right? But when you leverage a solution like this, you're simplifying all of this, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I was going to ask about the productivity piece and the data transfer fees. Yeah. Those are two areas that come up a lot in these conversations. Yeah. What's, what's that, does that, does it help the productivity and what's the cost side of it? How's that being addressed? Because I think VMware had some announcements. You want to do that one? Yeah, well, I mean, Go think, for it. Yeah. What, so I think even with uh, VPC pairing for a single AZ, right? So prior to this advancement, right, you had to utilize a transit gateway, a VMware transit gateway. Transit Connect had to be utilized for that. So that would provide that connectivity. But you had fees that come into play, right? Because what comes- On their transit gateway. Correct. The, Correct. One of the tricks, this is just one no, of the tricks good. of the cloud yeah. is that transit gateway was an interesting problem because it was somewhat hard to quantify what the real yeah. cost would be. Absolutely. And if, you know, if there's nothing that's worse than an unidentified yeah. cost like <laughs> that. So we worked hard over the last year with Amazon, with VMware, it took all three of us to, to eliminate that problem. You, so you eliminate that cost and that, that potential black hole of fees. We changed we right. change how we do it. We don't eliminate the cost. No, I don't want to go that far. Or the far, risk. But or we, the data transfer. We make it determinate. Yeah. You can understand what you're doing. We raise the performance by 2x. So we also improve the scale quite a bit. And we're just going to keep going down. I mean, Andy Jassy is one of my idols. And um, I've always heard him say, you know, you always know customers like it when things go faster and when they're cheaper. Yeah. That's a pretty safe bet. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so we're pursuing those paths. All right, so Andy, Andy also says work backwards from the customer. So what's the customer's perspective here? They're, they're going at it for either change from the data center or is it operational efficiency? Are they tuning? What's the customer um, point of view here? I think it's both in a way, yeah. right? I would say it's mixed where they're familiar with the NetApp construct, right? They want to leverage that, but they're utilizing cloud services in this case. And this is treated as an AWS native service, right? So it comes down to the simplicity of the cloud, the breadth and depth that AWS provides with NetApp's technology as well. And I, just to add on to that, yeah. I, I'd say our customers mostly are on-prem, you know, yeah. and, and then looking at moving to the cloud. So unlike AI, which is usually starting on the cloud and then re, but this market is, this group is looking at it that way. So it's always an economic consideration yeah. and an operational consideration, do I move? When I, our customers that I've seen move, I've seen them move for a sustainability. So a big one was data centers are not green enough, yeah. you can get greener by going to the Amazon yeah. cloud. I've seen you can extend DR for almost nothing yeah. in, if you, when you do it right. So I, I've seen guys who are trying to go all in on the cloud too. They're like, they're yeah. trying to get out of data centers yeah. completely. All of those, 
all of those advantage or use cases so the, are the ones we're trying to set so up. So the main motion or your use case is migrating a VMware to AWS. Extending is the word I always use. Extending, but yes. And extending. they get lower costs, more functionality, Correct. higher level services. Correct. I think in the biggest uh, thing holding back adoption, a little bit is complexity of the networking is one of the big ones we keep working on. And another one is just getting the costs so that we keep having to drive down the costs. That's why separating the compute from the storage was such an important step huge. to yeah. VMware. For VMware yeah. worked, I, I mean, they're not getting enough credit for all the work they did to no, make absolutely. this happen. Yeah. But that's all about making it more cost efficient yeah. to make the move. Correct. Correct. So, I mean, talk about the relationship with NetApp, and we've covered, by the way, we've covered a lot about the VMware-Amazon relationship when Pat Gelson was the CEO, and Andy came down for that press conference, I remember that. Um, but talk about the relationship now with NetApp. How's that going? What's the status? How do you feel about it? What's your point of view? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's ev always evolving, right? And I think it comes down to AWS has new services that come into play, over 200 services today, right? What it comes down to is we have these partners that we're jointly engineering these solutions with. NetApp has been wonderful to leverage those type of solutions and then even work with VMware. So we're doing like a tri-party effectual engineering effort at the end of the day, where we're working with our customers, we're driving advancements for our customers, NetApp technologies, Dudup, you know, compression, that also comes into play with this as Absolutely. well, right? So the customers can leverage that. So at the end of the day, you know what, I think the biggest disconnect comes down to, hey, this is not a native service, or we should, we don't treat it as a native service, but in fact it is, yeah. right? So. That was huge. Just because you were talking about back in 2014, it's yeah. probably, it's almost nine years or eight, yeah. eight yeah. years since we started working on all this. That when we're in the marketplace, there's some real advantages to being what's called a first party service. Absolutely. Makes billing easier, makes yeah. calling ser other services easier. And You mean and the Amazon marketplace where they're procuring? The Amazon marketplace yeah. is yes. what I'm talking about. Yes. Seller yeah. side. I don't mean to diss the marketplace, right? There's a lot no. of value in the marketplace, no, but, we, but there is some friction in being it. And we were working with Net, um, Amazon Engineering, yeah. FSX, the, the entire platform of FSX, not just FSX yeah. NetApp, is a really beautiful platform because it gives you all the advantages of first party services with yeah. a selection of file services, Absolutely. basically, is what FSX is, it's like RDS for databases. Yeah. Right. And getting to that meant that we could put ONTAP into that platform yeah. purely as software. So now it has instant scale across the entire Amazon you know, data center world, which is really amazing. And I, I always think, I don't ever think people appreciate how valuable it is for what FSX does just as its capabilities. And then obviously putting ONTAP in it, which we consider the world's best file service, it's a pretty good thing. <laughs> so so how, how is it that uh, you go about protecting customers that have regulatory needs or are looking at that and how do you play in that when they're looking for you know almost data sovereignty, I guess you could say, and how does that play with I mean, all this as well? That's a huge question. <laughs> um, well, you guys had some announcements, yeah. right? You guys Correct. had news. VMware, you had the uh, Blue XP disaster recovery. Ransomware, disaster yeah. recovery, all those yeah. elements, there's their traditional elements of protecting data that right. every good data, I mean, you can't get to be a 25 year old storage company without yeah protecting customers' data extremely well. Right. And being very containerized, multi-tenant operations, all those things. The thing I think people, when you think about NetApp and where we operate, and we do this with GovCloud, is yes. where I was, what I was thinking, if you want to go the extreme yeah. of this, all the stuff that we're talking about is also in Amazon GovCloud. And these are the most secure people on earth using our platform for data security. And we're very experienced with that class of security. Yep. I think as you get into, what I think is going to happen now is you look forward into like things like what Gen AI is going to do. It's going to put a lot of emphasis on tagging and yep. things that we've worked with Amazon on over the years to go, how do I have sovereignty over my data in a more sort of what's in the data kind of way than we've done it traditionally? That's going to be a big area of work together looking forward. And it's also like what's in the data, how, what can you do with that data? Mm -hmm. And I think that's bridging the gap as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Guys, the next two minutes we have left in the session, I want to get at kind of what's the core message you want to send to the audience out there right now. NetApp, obviously world class, storage, yeah. cloud investment. What's the state of the art uh, product solutions you have right now that you'd put out front 
uh, relative to NetApp and the relationship with AWS. What's the, what, what should people know about? What's the top story in your mind here at VMware Explorer? Yeah, I think for two different groups of customers. If you're a cloud native customer, I'd go, you just want, you may not even heard of NetApp before. Just know that you have this world-class file system available to you through FSX. If that's for files, like high-performance files for your AI work, you could use it there. VMware is an awesome use case, if, they, if that's what you're interested in. Usually the VMware people are more enterprise people looking to come right. to the cloud, and for those people, I just want you to hear, like we're working our ass off yeah. to lower, can I say that on Yeah, this? of course. Okay, of course. <laughs> um, we're not regulated. Okay, uh, sorry about that. I got an F-bomb the other day on my podcast. Oh, oh. never mind. Yeah, okay, I won't go there. I'll, I'll try to stay away from that. The, um, but that, that we keep making it more cost effective yeah. and powerful to make this cloud extension, which then it opens up a whole new world of capability. Absolutely. And by the way, LLMs, this whole big LLM and gener gener AI models, they're files. You know, vector databases, that's, embeddings, you can it. put them in files. So again, storage is not, AI <laughs> it's, makes, like, it's like the gift that keeps giving. AI makes unstructured data a lot more useful. We love AI. Yeah. <laughs> it's a core function at the end of the day, right? So you have yeah. to leverage storage no matter what. Yeah. I think the AI is a, is a gift in this market right now for many reasons, it's still early. Um, yeah. I don't even think it's the three steps to the, to the marathon as Adam Schlesky was been saying. I think it's even earlier. Yeah. I think it's just, an awakening now. I think as people start like going, oh wow, there's impact here. Yeah. You're going to start to see things being put in building. And I think we haven't seen anything in production yet that's going to even resemble the opportunity. Yeah, there's stuff out there now, but you got to store the data, you got to have the architecture. I think cloud and operating models of cloud for the data yeah. is going to be the most important aspect. Where It's not just the storage, it's the platform yeah. for We're working. the customer. We're working with some, yeah. there's some advanced users in AI, like in life sciences, these guys do it all the time too. Life sciences, healthcare, yeah. um, some automotive and things like that, that we're definitely working already. Yeah. But I agree with you that I think Gen AI is like a supercharger yeah. on and, this. And, and the, uh, the agility required too, if you look at the, what the AI teams now, they're, they're class, they're smaller teams, yeah. they're not as big, you don't need the volume of engineers or the number of engineers and the volume of data is higher, but the speed of the time to value it's great. is incredible. And I think that's something that's not talked about. Well, I mean, and all this, actually, um, Jensen and, and uh, Raghu did a great yes. job, I thought, yesterday, yeah. talking about the challenges. There's both huge opportunity, but then you have like this, uh, and, yeah, and Solepsky's talked about it too, Correct. is Correct. how do you do this responsibly? Correct. It's a complicated yeah. task. And, what we are seeing is there's a lot of these data scientists that are then using shared infrastructure, basically, <laughs> and shared data models and yeah. things. That whole trend we still got to go through. Absolutely, have to use that. Guys, that's a great interview. I'll give you guys the final word. Each of you share your perspective on what's next for you guys, the relationship products. What's, we'll start with you, Phil. What's next? What's, what are you up to what, for the I, ne next, next wave of the journey? I, I think, I, just to repeat myself, I, we're going to see a whole bunch of growth of POSIX apps moving to the cloud, moving to AWS. VMware is going to be a huge bridge yes. to that happening. That's going to be big. And what you were just talking about, I think the next big boom of that will be um, what can you do with unstructured data with all the tools of AI? Samir, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think what it comes down to is just the partnership in general, right? We are evolving the partnership. We're leveraging it even further with VMware Cloud on AWS. And we look at it from the standpoint where a lot of customers are looking at costs. How can they lower their costs, right? How can they leverage their data? This is a way to do all of that together. So we're looking to advance that even further and looking forward to that. Uh, the future of enterprise computing and storage is happening right here yes. on theCUBE. <laughs> I, Jensen it stole is. my line yesterday on stage. He actually said that. Jensen said that on stage. It is. He, no, should, I, be a, he should be a CUBE host. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a leather jacket, come on the CUBE. Be cool, you should get him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phil, thanks for seeing. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Samir, yeah, thanks, thank you. thanks for coming on the CUBE. Yeah, for Rob Stretchy, I'm Sean Furrier. Stay tuned. More live coverage, day two of VMware Explorer. We've got more wall-to-wall -wall action coming. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break.